So, Pat, as, as we, we look ahead, we kind of should look back a little bit. I remember talking to uh, Adam Trombley. Uh, boy, it had to be 1994. And I asked Adam, I said, how, how bad is the environment on the planet? How bad are we? And he said, the point of no return came and went in the mid-1980s. He said, it's too late. Nuclear energy, nuclear fuel waste... Uh, what we've done to degrade the the environment and the biosphere, he said it it it, it was it ended in terms of a chance to rehabilitate it in the mid eighties. Uh, I don't know if you've talked to Adam lately or not, but uh, we talk all the time. He's a good friend. Uh huh. What's he think now? How much time do we have before the whole thing really starts to noticeably implode? Well, we need uh, ET help. <laughs> E.T. come, E.T. phone home. <laughs> uh, we don't know what's going to happen because uh, I think, uh, you know, we're uh, the 2012 scenario and, and all that. We are coming in into the uh, photon belt where we're, we're going to be intensely cleansed by this energy coming off the, uh, the center of, of the galaxy. And I do believe that it's changing all of our consciousness for the better. And I'm not afraid of it. It doesn't bother me. Um, and Adam, you know, we, we in, in addition to worrying about the planet and all these things, we have things that we have to worry about, uh, you know, in our own lives, our own consciousness and, and so forth. And we've got to put all of it into perspective. None of us really know what's going to happen. But, yeah, no, it reached the point of no return a long time ago. No matter what we do right now, uh, we can't do anything to bring it back. Um, and so that there's either the Earth is going to cleanse itself, the Gaia, or or not, or uh, we're going to get extraterrestrial help. There's just no other way around it. E.T., uh, that's another issue. People, some people announced that they had been appointed an ambassador from one star system or another to try to save the planet and wake people up. And you get a lot of charlatans uh, working out there. Sure. W- what about E.T. and the control of this planet? Uh, have you any ideas on what may or may not be going on? Well, I've had my own uh, visitations that are very clear. And also my son, when he was a child... Um, he kept telling me that the movies he'd run in and want to climb in bed with my wife and I, because he'd said the movie stars are visiting him. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, he told me that the movie stars were ETs that, that the only thing he could compare it with is, is when he was in movies and the actors on the screen had these great big heads, right? And and so these visitations would occur in the middle of the night, and they always had these great big heads. And and so he called them movie stars. And um, <clears throat> so uh, I believe that the negative ETs are gone. I, I think that, that that they're gone now, and I don't think that they're negatively affecting us anymore. That's That's my belief based on a number of things, but I believe that, that we are getting help now from, uh, let's say, the positive uh, races, because there are all kinds out there, and we can't dismiss it. I know it's absolutely true. I've had my own experiences, like I say, and uh, <clears throat> but I'm no ambassador for the ETs, and I haven't been told to tell uh, anybody anything uh, that I'm consciously aware of. Right. And, what, what uh, uh, Pat, what are they telling us? What might they tell us to do that we obviously can't figure out on our own? I mean, look at Fukushima. We don't need nuclear power. It's absurd. No. Uh, if they don't intervene, much along the lines of the day the Earth stood still in 1951, where they uh, sent an emissary here and he gave the planet an ultimatum. You either disarm and cut it out or you're toast. And it seems to me that's the only kind of thing that this species is going to heed, if it'll heed anything. Yeah. Well, you know, the biggest answer to uh, Fukushima is sulfur. Did you know that sulfur forms uh, 146 compounds of 92 elements, and sulfates cannot stay in the body more than 12 hours? 
And uh, if if they dumped huge amounts of sulfur on uh, Fukushima and into the ocean, it would sulfate all the radioactive elements except for iodine, and and that these would then pass through the bodies of the fish and everything uh, in sulfate form and would not stay in the body. Hmm. Uh, and then we have to work on, on uh, you know, damages to the cells, and those can be done with uh, antioxidants. I mean, there are ways to take care of our bodies and to neutralize the radioactivity. And mm -hmm. no one's talking about sulfating the ions and organic sulfur in, in our bodies. Uh, is uh, of supreme importance in the form, uh, we call it MSM, uh, methyl sulfonylmethane, right, right. which is a form of organic sulfur. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we can do things to help the environment ourselves. And one of the things I do believe the ETs are saying is that we have to want them to help. We have to ask for help. And not only that, but we have to help ourselves. People have to wake up from their sleep and uh, and and start doing their best. And just like the hundredth monkey, when a certain number of us uh, wake up, then uh, I think we're going to get the help we want and the help we need. And I think we're almost there. Well, the idea is a good one, but you see stories like the one I ran yesterday. Liberia in Africa, everybody's looking at Africa now to plunder it. Liberia has yeah. sold off almost one-fourth of the entire country to logging companies. They, don't, <laughs> they yeah. just sold it off. They don't yeah. care. And they're destroying the rainforest at uh, record rates to put in soy, you know, genetically modified soybean crops, which are going to go ar around the world poisoning animals and humans in various forms. Uh, this whole GMO revolution is is out of control, and there's no way to recall that. You can, as you said earlier, you can't go backwards. Wherever yes. we're going, we're going forward and out the other side, wherever that is. Well, in the first place, I can take any genetically modified seed, I can treat it, and it'll go back to uh, uh, prehistoric times, return to its previous genetics, and all that genetic modification will be neutralized. What do you think about the seed vault? What's the significance of that up in Norway? Well, the significance of that is that they want to have the original seeds because they're creating these seeds that uh, that can't replicate, and and uh, they want to control the food, control the seeds, so that everyone on the planet is under control uh, by food and. Uh, and so the seed vaults there, just in case, because, you know, the idea if some catastrophic event does hit the earth, these seeds will be preserved. And um, But these guys are doing their best, and uh, I don't, like I said, I don't hate them for it. Uh, there are answers to it. I'm not going out and telling people how to, how to reverse genetic modifications. Uh, I'd be dead in very quickly if I were to do that, and I have no intention of doing that. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I, I might be uh, strange, but I'm not crazy. So you're saying for sure you do know of a technology to reverse runaway GMO? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. It can be reversed. Yeah. And it's really quite simple. Well, it, um, it, and I, I can't tell about it. it you know, if, if if I were to talk about it, that'd be it. You know, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd be gone. And, you know, the, a lot of this stuff that we're talking about, they don't care because they tell us what they're doing, That these these guys. And, oh, they uh, don't care. They're in complete control or virtually controlling uh, uh, everything to the extent that it doesn't matter what they tell us anymore. And they're just telling it to us right in our faces. And most of the people, of course, don't register anything. Right. And they're proud of it, you know. They want to brag, and uh, you know, see the thing about me is I see both sides of everything completely and totally, and uh, and I understand where they're going and so forth. But I also, you know, I know know how to reverse it. I know how to do all these things. But uh, and and someday that we'll need that technology, uh, and it could be sooner than later. So we we bide our time and and we see what happens. You know, I'm kind of 
observing. <laughs> well, I say let's roll it out uh, sooner rather than later. I remember Morris Berman's amazing book. He's got a new book out, by the way. It was called Twilight of American Culture. And it, it had to be 10, 12 years ago or more that the book came out. And it was one of the most prescient, uh, remarkable uh, books I've ever seen in terms of what was coming. He said, we're losing our values so fast that they're going to have to be cloistered somehow and recorded and protected for such time that when a normalcy comes back over the masses that these values will be again available to be remembered and taught to young people. So wow. it was quite an interesting book. That's beautiful. Yeah. Pat, uh, really nice to talk to you again, friend. You take care of yourself. You too, Jeff, and you take care of yourself. It's uh, always wonderful to talk talk with you. I enjoy it so much. Thank you. Thanks, my friend. We'll do it again. Okay, Jeff. All righty. Good night. Good night. Okay, Dr. Patrick Flanagan. And uh, Pat is a very interesting man. <laughs>